हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम गरिमा जैन फ्रॉम राजस्थान टेक्निकल यूनिवर्सिटी कोटा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल ग्रीवेंस हैंडलिंग फ्रॉम द पेपर ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल द स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग एंड डेफिनेशन ऑफ ग्रीवेंस एंड देन नो द कॉजेज ऑफ ग्रीवेंसेज नोइंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्रीवेंस हैंडलिंग and understand the benefits of grievance redressal machinery introduction grievances relate to problems of interpretation or perceived non fulfillment of one's expectations from the organization a grievance is a complaint of one or more workers with respect to the organization it can be related to wages to the conditions of work leave transfer overtime promotion seniority job assignment and termination of services definition according to dale yoder a grievance is a written complaint filed by an employee and claiming unfair treatment keith davis defines it as any real or imagined feeling of personal injustice which an employee has concerning his employment relationship types of grievances we can classify grievances according to where they come from and how they arise but we can also look at them according to who is affected like the individual grievances most grievances affect only a single individual even so you as a steward should be filling the grievance not the employee on her or his own if the contract permits it it is in the interests of everyone in the union that the grievance is handled properly bearing in mind the interests of the union as well as the griever and when an individual's rights have been violated and he or she refuses to file a grievance you should file the grievance on behalf of the union especially if the contract permits it in this way you will defend the collective bargaining agreement and protect the rights of all the employees covered by it the management's argument that you cannot file an individual grievance on behalf of the union is invariably false continuing with the types of grievances the group grievances this is where several employees have the same complaint usually you file the grievance on behalf of the group group means who must be clearly named or defined though there is nothing wrong with filing a series of individual grievances dealing with the same issue then comes the union or policy grievance exactly what your rights are and exactly what these grievances are called depends on the language used in the contract these two types of grievances usually mean the same thing the union grievance is one that is filed by the union on behalf of a group of individuals or the whole bargaining unit or on behalf of an individual who refuses to file it types of grievances will be continued in this slide also invariably a union grievance is one in which the union consider its rights to have been violated and not just the rights of individual in the bargaining unit again you might find the expression general grievance used and it might mean union grievance policy grievance or group grievance depending once more on the language now comes about grievance and arbitration almost all opiu contracts contain a section which gives the union the right to process a grievance to final and binding arbitration if the employer ignores the grievance by not giving an answer as required by the collective bargaining agreement then the union may advance the grievance to the next stage and the next until the issue is either before an arbitration court 
लाइक इन कैनेडा और आर्बिट्रेशन इज इन्वोव बाय अ कोर्ट इन द यू एस नो वी विल डिस्कस एज टू वेन इज अ कंप्लेंट एंड वेन इट इज अ ग्रीवेंस इफ द मैनेजमेंट हैज नॉट वायलेटेड एनी वंस राइट्स देर इज नो ग्रीवेंस बट देर मे बी अ रियल कंप्लेन एंड इफ यू आर अ गुड स्टीवर्ड यू विल डील विद कंप्लेन्ट्स एज सीरियसली एज यू वुड अ ग्रीवेंस हेयर आर सम टाइप्स ऑफ कंप्लेन्ट्स we will continue with that when it is a complaint and when it is a grievance personal troubles and requests for advice you will often find that people want to confine in you treat them sympathetically try to help them and keep confidences strictly to yourself then the complaints about fellow workers these need a lot of tact diplomacy and moral authority on your part this sort of complaint becomes a grievance if management gets involved when it shouldn't according to the contract or past practice or it doesn't get involved when it should complaints about government agencies and local bodies then complaints against management not covered by the contract there may be cases you have to face which do not involve an injustice do not violate past practice and are not covered by the contract it still may be possible to remedy these complaints by informal discussions between the union and the employer further continuing with that when it is a complaint and not a grievance borderline cases you should seek advice from your chief steward or the grievance committee or your local business representative before taking these up as grievances report back to the person complaining as soon as possible explaining what you are doing and why then complaints against the union it is up to you to explain to the complainer what his or her rights are under the rules and constitution of the local and international union causes of grievances there are various causes of grievances like an employee is dissatisfied and harbors a grievance when he feels there has been an infringement of his rights that his interests has been jeopardized this sense of grievance generally arises out of misinterpretation or misapplication of company policies and practices concerning wages demand for individual adjustment the worker feels that he is not paid fully complaints about incentives can be there piece rates are too low or too complicated and the mistakes in calculating the wages of the workers concerning supervision there can be some grievances like the complaints against discipline inadequate instructions given for job performance objectives of having a particular foreman the foreman playing favorite the foreman ignores the complaints then there can be objections to the manner in which the general methods of supervision are used there are too many rules regulations and they are not clearly posted the general working conditions the unhygienic working conditions the poor production standards and the non availability of tools materials and equipments they all come under the general working conditions of the organization collective bargaining the company is attempting to undermine the trade union and the workers who belong to that union the contract with labor force has been violated the company does not deal effectively with union grievances the company does not allow the supervisors to deal with and settle the grievances of the employees the company disregards the agreements already arrived at with the workers or their trade union the management policy wage rates and methods of wage payments the overtime and incentive payments promotion transfer and seniority issues lack of opportunities for career growth leave 
issues related to employee conduct and the unhappy relationship with the bosses all these come under the management policy issue now what are the methods of understanding employee grievances that how do we come to know that employees are having grievances so few methods we shall be discussing with you the first of all is the exit interview method in this method the employees are interviewed who have decided to quit the company and this could reveal a lot about what is not visible to the naked eye these are very useful as the company can come to know what problems are being faced by the employees this is one of the very good methods and mostly adopted by the company the opinion surveys in opinion surveys a survey is to be undertaken to find out how employees feel about the company about the work their colleagues opinion as the name suggests in this kind of survey opinions suggestions are taken up by the employees as to what do they feel what do they feel about the company or the organization in which they are working in the they, what do they feel about the environment their working conditions so all this kind of things are being asked by the employees gripe boxes gripe boxes may be kept at permanent locations in the factory for lodging anonymous complaints pertaining to any aspect relating to work since the person lodging the complaint need not reveal his identity he can reveal his feelings of injustice or discontent fairly and without any fear of victimization then there is an open door policy by which grievances can be taken care of this is a kind of walk in interview or meeting with the manager when the employees can express his feelings about any work related to grievance the manager can cross check the details of the complaint through various means at his disposal observation in this grievance identification technique grievances are not heard from the aggrieved employee directly rather the manager or the immediate supervisor he constantly tracks the behavior of the employees working under him if he comes across an employee who exhibits an indifferent attitude experiences difficulties in getting along with people mishandles or damages tools equipments or materials due to carelessness or he or she is quite often absent then they infer such an employee has some serious grievances which needs immediate action and remedy methods of understanding employee grievances we have already discussed them now we can see them in the diagram also that is exit interviews opinion surveys gripe boxes and open door policy so in all the three methods we have seen that in exit interview we take the interview of the employee who is leaving in opinion survey we take their opinion as to what they feel about the organization their atmosphere their working culture and in gripe boxes we ask the employees to drop any suggestion that they want to give into the boxes and with with no name of theirs that is anonymously they can give the suggestions and in the open door policy that the employees are open to talk to the top management whatever problems they are facing in the organization grievance redressal machinery this is a very important part of grievances that how to redress the grievances a grievance procedure is a formal process which is preliminary to an arbitration which enables the parties involved to attempt to resolve their differences in a peaceful manner it enables the company and the trade union to investigate and discuss the problem at issues without in any way interrupting the peaceful and orderly conduct of business when the grievance redressal machinery works effectively it satisfactorily resolves most of the disputes between labor and the management the grievance procedure may
may be of an open door type or the step ladder type in an open door policy the management asserts that no employee is prevented from going to it directly with his grievance and even meet the head of the firm in an effort to have his grievance properly attended to it this type of policy is useful in case of small units grievance procedure in a unionized organization the operation of the grievance procedure may contain the following steps first the aggrieved employee verbally explains his grievance to his immediate supervisor or in a conference or a discussion specially arranged for the purpose the employee seeks satisfaction from his supervisor the grievance can be settled if the supervisor has been properly trained for the purpose and if he adheres strictly to a basic problem solving method now the second step it begins when the grievance is not settled by the supervisor in this case it is sent to a higher level manager with a note in which are mentioned the time place nature of the action to which the employee objects the higher level manager is generally a superintendent or an industrial relations officer after this in the grievance procedure the grievance is now submitted to the grievance committee since the decisions of the supervisor and of the higher level manager have not solved the problem the committee which is composed of some fellow employees management representative considers the record and may suggest some possible solution further continuing with the grievance procedure that if the decision or the suggestion of the grievance committee is not accepted by the grievant he may approach the management or the corporate executor now the final step is taken when the grievance is referred to an arbitrator who is acceptable to the employee as well as the management so we have seen how the case is done in a unionized organization how the grievance procedure and what all steps are there grievance procedure in practice grievance procedure differs from company to company for example at patni computers the employees can file their complaints on the intranet through the e care that is a grievance resolution system the complaint center around three areas that is human resources facilities and project related the response should be made within 4 days failing to which it is auto escalated to the next level from the process owner to the function head to the management council now we shall discuss the model grievance procedure the national commission on labor has suggested a model grievance procedure which would ensure a speedy settlement of grievances now the second step of model grievance procedure the aggrieved employee shall convey his or her grievance verbally to the officer designated by the management to deal with grievance the officer will have to reply to the complaints within 48 hours of its presentation to him or her the third step of model grievance procedure if the grievant is not satisfied with the answer or does not receive any answer within 48 hours he shall then present the grievance to the departmental head nominated for this purpose the head must give his or her reply within 3 days of the presentation of the grievance now the fourth step of the model grievance procedure if the aggrieved employee is still not satisfied with the decision of the departmental head or does not receive any reply within the stipulated period he can approach the grievance committee for the settlement of his grievance the grievance committee has to give its recommendation in 7 days and report it to management the management must give the decision to the grievant within 3 days or the fifth step of the model grievance procedure if the employee is still not satisfied with the decision made by the grievance committee or does not receive the decision from it he can make an appeal to the management for a revision of the decision taken the management can take a week for appeal to be considered and the revised decision is to be informed to the grievant now the last step that is the model grievance procedure if the employee is still not satisfied with the decision of the management the grievance may be referred to voluntary arbitration 
within a week after the decision taken by the management stage 4. So we can see in the model grievance procedure that the decision of the arbitrator is final and binding on both the parties that is the management and the union. In the next slide you will see the diagram and better understand it. Now through the diagram you can see that the aggrieved employee goes to the departmental representative. Within 48 hours that person has to give the answer. If he doesn't give then it goes to the head of department. The head of department has to give any suggestion or any solution within three days. If he doesn't do, then the grievance goes to the grievance committee. And if he doesn't give the answer or the committee doesn't give any answer within seven days, it goes to the chief executive. Here also the time period is seven days. Otherwise, a voluntary arbitration is carried out. So this is the model grievance procedure. Grievance handling significance of non-discriminatory schemes. Indian organizations, they are adopting various measures to motivate and retain their pre precious workforce. It is very important for every organization to make the employees feel that it cares for them. Thus, it becomes important for them to install and maintain an inbuilt system to employees. The maintenance of a dynamic grievance identification and redressal is one such measure in employee retention strategy. For example, at ONGC, in order to keep its employees motivated, the company it has incorporated schemes such as grievance identification schemes, grievance handling schemes and suggestion schemes to identify and redress the grievances of the employees. The essentials of a good grievance procedure. That is what are the requirements of a good grievance procedure. The first is legally sustainable. It should be ensured by the organization that its grievance procedures is in conformity with the existing laws of the nation. The procedure cannot violate any of the rights of the employees guaranteed by the law. In case of any disagreement between the grievance procedure and the legal provision on any matter, the laws are supreme and binding. Next essential of a good grievance procedure is mutually acceptable. In order to be effective, the grievance procedure must enjoy the confidence of all relevant parties, namely the management and the employees and the union. The procedure must ensure equity, justice and openness in its operations to inculcate confidence in the minds of all parties. Easily understandable. The grievance procedure must be reasonably simple and easily understandable. It should be known to all the employees of the organization. If an employee is having grievance, he must know whom to contact and where to contact. Highly flexible. Now, this procedure of grievance should be very flexible enough to respond to the reported grievance. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this particular module of grievance handling. A grievance is any discontent or dissatisfaction, whether expressed or not, whether valid or not, arising out of anything connected with the company, which an employee thinks, believes or feels to be unfair, unjust or inequitable. Grievances may arise due to problems related to wages, general working conditions or due to problems related to supervision. Grievances redressal process gives an assurance to the employees about the existence of a mechanism for the prompt redressal of their grievance. There are few grievance identification techniques like open door policy, exit interviews, opinion surveys and gripe boxes as we have seen them in detail while discussing the module. There is a model of grievance procedure for handling grievances which ensures speedy settlement of the grievance. Thank you.